Good morning and shalom, dear friends. Uh, today is Wednesday and it is the third day of Sukkot. And uh, I didn't get on here yesterday because we had quite the windstorm. <laughs> In fact, if you notice our uh, sukkah, all of the curtains are pulled aside. I need to uh, pull those all down and get everything set back up. Um, yesterday we had so much wind come through. We've got leaves everywhere. It was pulling on all the curtains and uh, <laughs> quite a cold and windy day. And this morning it's still a little cold. I've got my blanket and my coffee and I've been um, just kind of hanging out here thinking, is it too cold to be out here? <laughs> but it's supposed to warm up. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you about uh, the word reside and uh, why a sukkah, why a dwelling, a tabernacle, it, that's one of the words. Um, it's called tabernacle or a booth or a tent, um, a sukkah. <laughs> and um, depending on if you're in Hebrew or the Greek, um, there's so much to learn about this uh, little structure that God commanded his people in Leviticus 23. Um, he said, I think it's Leviticus, let me see, Leviticus 23:42. Um, he's giving them the commands that on this uh, particular day, I think it's the 15th um, day of the seventh month, um, live in temporary shelters for seven days. All native born Israelites are to live in the shelters. So your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses announced this and he told the people once a year, um, even though you're going to now be in a, a land that is more permanent, you're going to be able to build permanent houses. I want you once a year to go out and remember the time your ancestors were in the wilderness and that I took care of them. And that's what's so neat about um, the word reside or dwell or abide, um, tabernacle, the tent. You know, reading the Old Testament, the word tabernacle has such meaning because God actually came down into a tent and he dwelt among the people. Um, he dwelt with them in the, he led them uh, with the cloud, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of the fire. Um, and that was his leading, his provision. He provided them manna, which was kind of like food in the middle of the wilderness and quail. Um, he took care of them. He protected them from the elements. And uh, I was really thinking of that yesterday as here we are trying to sit out here and have coffee in our temporary kind of shelter and we aren't really protected from the elements. Um, we're kind of at the mercy of if the wind's going to blow, if it's going to rain. Um, the way that these structures that he tells them is that they are to build it with um, three sides covered. You can cover three sides but leave one side open for guests because you're welcoming in your neighbors, you're welcoming in strangers, you're welcoming people in to the community and to come and sit with you in the sukkah. We're welcoming um, non-Christians, come, come join um, our Jesus, find out who he is and uh, dwell with him. Uh, accept him as your savior and you're gonna find peace and security. And uh, yesterday's little storm uh, got me really thinking about how when you're out here uh, in the elements, not protected, you have to trust that God would protect. Um, there was one of the videos that I had been watching on this and uh, the father had talked about uh, during one of the attacks on Israel, um, they had asked the rabbi, should we, it's, uh, it's Sukkot, and should we build sukkahs and go sit in the sukkah, even though we're, our families are basically open for, you know, open fire or bombs or, you know, everything. And the rabbis told them the safest place you can be is in the sukkahs because you are under God's protection. 
See, we build permanent structures thinking that we have protected ourselves. It's our security. Um, you know, we do that with money. We've built ourselves savings accounts. We've built ourselves um, what we think is uh, security in a job. And uh, we've built ourselves what we think is security in a marriage, in a family. And then the storms of life come and uh, those what we thought were permanent structures aren't such permanent structures. And um, God is teaching us that although our world may not be able to be trusted, our world may not feel secure, um, by living in a tent once a week or once a year, um, he's showing the Israelites, I'm the one who you trust. I am your protection. I am your provision. I will provide for you in the wilderness. Um, so that is just a really neat thing. They, you know, have the three walls and the, the one side open. Um, usually it could be out of wood. A lot of times it's um, sheets or tarps or whatever. Um, and the wind blows. It's actually um, supposed to have an open roof so that you can see the stars because they say Abraham, which if you go back into Genesis, God promised Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars. So God wants them to go back and remember the promises. Um, when's the last time you went back and remembered the promises God's given you? When's the last time you opened your Bible and listened to all of the promises um, that he can, you know, he's given you through the years, he's given his people. And um, I also wanted to, there's so many words you can focus in on with the Sukha. Um, like I said, tabernacle. You can look up all the verses you can about tabernacle and how God came and dwelt with us. He came and hung out with Moses and talked to him in the tent, in the ta in the tent of meeting, which is basically a tabernacle. Um, he kept them safe, you know, from wildlife and from, you know, I think, I don't know where it is. I'd have to look it up. Maybe I'll find it and put it uh, here on the screen. Um, but he says that while they were in the wilderness, their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out, they had enough to eat. Somehow in, in lack, they had everything they needed. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's so much good stuff, just really good stuff about that. But then you can go to a whole nother level. You can uh, start looking up in the New Testament, all the things Jesus said about abide or to dwell. And you can start right away with uh, John um, chapter 1, when um, John actually introduces Jesus. He um, gets, sometimes for some people it's a hard chapter to start out with because they're not quite understanding the, you know, it's the in the beginning the word was God, or in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And that, you know, becomes a tongue twister, but it's really, it's mimicking Genesis 1 when God created, uh, he created the universe, he created the world, he created uh, the earth and mankind and all that's in it. And John is showing the divinity of Christ and how he was there um, at the beginning. And he is called the Word, which this is also the Word of God. There's so many parallels uh, to all of that. But if you go down to chapter, um, well, it's chapter 1, verse 14. It says, um, and it depends on your translation, but I'll tell you what the Greek word is. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Um, that word dwelling, I actually have a... Uh, Greek to English translation which does a side-by-side -side. so it has the King James here it has the NIV here and then it has uh, the Greek version here and then where it's written in Greek right underneath it will actually tell you the exact translation of that word to the best English translation so if I go to Wait a minute, I am one page over because of the wind. 
if I go to um, John chapter 1, verse 14, when I see, and the word flesh became, and, because it, it does everything back, you know, the way that everything's written, but tabernacle is the word for dwelt, tabernacled among us. So if we read it exactly how it is written in the Greek um, by John, it would say the word became flesh and made his, or he tabernacled among us. He tabernacled. In other words, he dwelled with us. And that's what this sukkah is. It's a promise of God coming and dwelling with us. And Jesus came and, and uh, he, um, tabernacled with the people in the first century and he's coming again and right now he actually dwells in us through his Holy Spirit so we are now his tabernacle we are now his sukkah <laughs> we are now his dwelling we abide with him if we stay connected to him uh, he gives us everything we need he gives us um, he provides our needs he gives us protection um, and so that's such a comforting thing uh, today in a world that does not feel safe. I long for safety. I think we all long for safety and security and rest. And how do you rest in a sukkah when the wind is blowing? <laughs> how do you rest, in, you know, um, or feel secure when a storm is brewing around you? Well. Once again, you can go straight to the Bible, and that's why I love the Bible so much, because it gives you answers to all of those things where Jesus climbs into the boat through a storm, a couple different storms that the, the, um, the disciples are going through, and he shows them that he calms the storm. He has authority over the storm. He has authority over nature. And so that's why when we abide in him, when we tabernacle with him and he tabernacles with us, when we sit in the rest and the security, the storm can be blowing around us and yet we still find rest and security. And I think that's one of the great things about um, the Sukkah and in, in celebrating Sukkot um, that we can find that and we can dig. Today, um, I'm going to give you a challenge if you would like to take it. Open up your Bible. You can Google it. You can go to the back of your Bible in your concordance at the very back. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> you could look up words like abide and um, dwell and tabernacle and booth and um, you know, all of those kind of words, security and, um, and provide. Look up all of the verses that you can find on those things and sit with God today and rest in him and feel secure. Love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Happy Sukkot. And I will see you in the next video. Shalom, my dear friends.